What up, Laker Nation? Today I want to get to a few things, some off-season stuff in the front office once again. Uh, I, I'm now I'm able to make a, a clear picture of where this team is, is going. I've been sitting on some information for a while, but I have to wait to, to see what happens in the off-season now. They basically complete what they, uh, how they roster going to look and open the night. Uh, the contract details of Yi Jillian came out today, and it's very upsetting because, for one, his incentive clause, I don't understand why it was no performance incentives in it, not one performance in it. Everything was games played, which you might as well just basically give giving him the $8 million. So they Lakers trying to play people ahead and give someone a sentence, which I think he's going to meet for a few reasons. His incentive clause is games played. Now, I'm going to break it down like this. It's a few, few reasons I think that he's going to um, meet that standard. It's only 60 games. He only had to appear in 60 games to get $8 million. And anytime someone on a one-year contract and have that much of a, a cushion where you could get $1.1 million and $8 million, you're pretty much going to play. He's going to play hurt. Even if he's hurt, he's a little sore, he's sick. If he come in the game and come out, that considered a game play. So for him, he's gonna break his neck to even get in some games. He don't have to be 100. percent If he's 60, percent he's just gonna be out there. Even if he don't play much, even one or two minutes, and that's where the Lakers put themselves in damage control, where it should have been performance incentives. Games play incentives don't mean anything. Now, reason why I think he's gonna um, meet it. For one, he his skill set. Is different from all of a big man. All of a big man, he the only one can uh, scratch the floor some. That's for one. So for that reason alone, and, and the way Luke Walton want to play, he's 6'11". You really don't want to play a 6'8 Nance really at center or Julius Randle. He would make, make a little more sense at center as far as the small ball. So that would get him on the floor right there. That's for one. And two, injuries. We have a few uh, big men who have a history of injuries. Larry Nance has been bad on injuries for years. Uh, Moskov injuries. Julius Randle, he had one full year that he played and one year that he was hurt. So that's like 50-50. We don't know. It's the second, um, third year coming up. Um, Tyree Black is undersized. And Zubox is only 19, which I think he'll spend a lot of time in the D League. So that lead, he will definitely be able to uh, get some type of minutes. I ain't saying it'll be major minutes, it was five or two minutes. He'll be able to collect that $8 million, which I don't understand. It seems like the Lakers, as far as the negotiation, it's like they cannot negotiate. It's like nothing goes in their favor. Every negotiation seemed like it went, it went to the players' favor. It is ye never done anything in the NBA. He was the sixth overall pick, total bust, didn't do anything, and show nothing. He played down China. China is a weak, weak league. Yeah, he scored 20 points, but he shot 16 times a game. He averaged 20. So you can't really take nothing from that and think, oh, he got better. No, he's, he's just not a good player. And so to give him $8 million, he's been out the league for a couple of years. Give him $8 million, everything in his favor, in the player's favor. Same with Moskov, giving him a, a full guaranteed contract. Same with Luau Ding. And it's, it's very upsetting how this, this thing turned out. Now, basically, the information I've been sitting on, ain't really no big information like that, but I was told a few years ago that a lot of owners and general managers uh, lost a lot of faith in the Lakers and feel that the Lakers are desperate and no one really tangling with them unless it works for, and they end they feel the Lakers desperate as far as to get back in contention. I heard this basically when Kobe went down, when they gave Kobe that, uh, that two-year deal while he was hurt. So right there they felt, a lot of teams felt like the Lakers are competent and, and feel that they can get their way with the Lakers. And 
at first I didn't I didn't believe it. I, I disagreed with it. I supported Mitch all the way through and through. But now I'm starting to see it. I look back, I want you guys just to just to just hear me out for a minute and understand what's going on. And if you notice, the Lakers been wanting to make they always Mitch always looking to make a deal. But Mitch hasn't made a deal because a lot of deal been one sided. And thank God he didn't take the one sided deals. So a lot of teams been coming at him with one sided deals, he haven't taken it. He bust out in free agency, haven't did, done anything in free agency. So as far as trades, he haven't got any trades done. The only trades he been making lately was trades that teams want to dump salary and take a player. And as far as the Germany Lynn, a lot of people, yeah, niggas got a first round pick out of Germany Lynn and, and making a big deal of it like Mitch is a genius. It's not that he's a genius. Chris Bosch was on his way to Houston to, to close out a deal before Miami jumped the gun. He told Houston he wanted to play with them. So they had to make the cap room. In the summer, you don't have that much time to sit there and be negotiating. In that year, a lot of teams didn't have cap space, only the Lakers in, in Philadelphia. And um, those the only two teams had the cap space to, to take on Germany land contract without uh, any players in return. So Houston, which I would have done too, they figured their team, they, they felt, especially if they get Bosch, they'd be like a 61 team. And the pick will be in the late 20s, 28, 29. So they feel we could give up a 28, 29 if we got a chance to give Bosch, which is an understandable deal. I do that any day of the week. A, a late, late first round pick, which you basically have a veteran team. The guy, the young guy wasn't going to play much anyway. So Houston did that deal, like I said. So it's not like, oh, Mitch was a genius. He pulled, pulled something out. Like they was basically desperate. Bosch was on his way there. And they need to clear that cap space to get them. And as far as with the Roy Hibbert, if you notice, Indiana wasn't as desperate as Houston was. So Indiana, it was a second round pick. I think they exchanged second round picks and Lakers took on Roy Hibbert contract. So it's not like the Lakers got a first round pick out of that. They got like a late second round pick. Oh, I, mean, I think the Lakers gave them a second round pick, if I'm not mistaken. And then this year, as far as Calderon, the same situation. They want to get rid of, they want to make room for Dwayne Wade. Anybody in their right mind will do it. You, they give up two late uh, second round picks. These second round picks, they like oh, collecting access. It's second round picks. So teams will, will get that, especially if you could get a player like Dwayne Wade who's going to help you box off and help your team and wins. So it's not like. He did anything genius, and, and, and teams had to make a, a move fast. So you don't have time to be negotiating back and forth with teams trying to uh, get the best deal you get, especially in, in like a free agents period. So that happened. And basically, to me, the most successful thing Mitch has been doing lately was the one-year deals with the younger players. And it's, it's which ironic is, I see a lot of uh, the Lake, Lake of Nations was bashing Bashing was Wesley Johnson. Wesley Johnson had a was taking one year, one million dollar deals. They did that with Ed Davis. Nick Young took a one year, one million dollar deal, also, and and, and and you know he get bashed to this day right now. But people forget the same thing like Moscow. Luke Walton that that year he was a free agent was the first free agent signed twelve oh one. The Lakers signed him to a six-year, $30 million, I was way overpaid. Look, Walton was not a good player. He was just, just basically smart, and he was a good passer. And and they always talk about his high, high IQ. Most players who come from, who father was in the NBA, pretty much have a high IQ. You look at Luke Walton. You look at Brent and John Barry, uh, Steph and Clay. Even Larry Nance, he has a, uh, they try to compare him. His IQ should be higher than Julius Randle. You know, his father's an NBA. So they make a big deal out that and talk about he's a glue guy. I watched Luke Wharton play. I never remember him in nobody's face. He's basically quiet, just runs around the court. Sometimes you don't even know he's on the court. He knew the triangle, like the back of his hand. He'd make good passing. So that's basically what he did. He was not athletic. He was no defender. He couldn't score. And there's times he, 
he was scared to shoot the outside shot. You know, he would not take the open shot. It's plenty of times he would not take the open shot. So he was not a good player. He was overpaid for many years. He haven't done anything. He had a really, really, really good two months of the, of the season. That season he became free agent to December. Then he got hurt. And then he really didn't play well after that. And like I said, Laker Nation, I noticed what even the reporters and the commentators and stuff like that, it's, they, they pick and choose a lot who they want to pick on, and I think it's not fair. Like I said, Wesley Johnson get bashed a lot. He he was pretty solid, especially for one million dollars. He averaged almost ten points a game. He he, athlete, he he almost ten point his points a game. He was okay, you know what I'm saying? Nick Young, like I said, he didn't really have no. The first year he had one million dollars, and also uh, Smush Parker. He takes up the Laker fans hate him. If you know the Smush Parker for the two years he was played with the Lakers, he was on minimum contract. He averaged 11 points both years, like four assists both years. And he was in the top 10 in steals in both years. Both years. A young player in both years. And this was Kobe was just shooting everything under the sun. Both years, top 10 in steals, um, 10, 11 points, four rebounds, and he got bashed. And he was only getting a minimum contract. And, and Laker fans bashed him like there's no tomorrow. But I ain't hear them bash Luke Walton. They saying here glue guys, saying like the Lakers paying these guys just for that's important. Well, I'm playing 30 men to be a glue guy, but here these guys is performing and was playing well. You know, it don't, you know, it's, it was a problem. Same thing like Sasa Vucic. He didn't, Lakers overpaid money. Good thing he only had a three year deal, but he was not good. They, and, and it's crazy, like, I noticed, like, Yi Julian. It's why, oh, his outside shot, he may shoot 34%. The same thing like Nick Young shot. Nick Young get bashed for it, but he may get glorified for shooting 30, in the, in the uh, mid-30s, low-30s, whatever, from three-point. He don't shoot. A lot of uh, guys in the league don't shoot 40% from the um, three, 40 and above. So that part really, you know, bothers me how I notice there's a lot of picking and choose who they bash, who they don't. And a lot of these guys who I mentioned was on minimum deals, one year short deals. And Lakers overpaid for a lot of guys that shouldn't have got paid. And I was on board the whole time defending Mitch, didn't want Mitch to go. But I felt that he was attached to the hip with Jim Buss. Now, after looking back, they can't get it done. If you notice now, you notice when the Lakers, when the season ended after the Lakers got the second pick, Mitch was really feeling himself. Oh, we in great position. We have $70 million to spend. We have the most cap room. We have the number two pick. We has a lot. We have the young players. We have a Los Angeles. We have a lot to sell this year. Last year, we didn't have a lot to sell. Kobe's coming off the injuries, and, we, and no, we didn't have much to sell. When we had a lot of free agents. Now we have the young players. We have the number two pick. We have the most money in free agency. We can sell Los Angeles. We got a lot to sell. I'm not going to um, spend money. I'm spending wisely. Be smart. I'm not going to overpay. Remember when Mitch said that, guys? Come on, let's remember now when Mitch said that. And he got us Timothy Moscow, Luau Thing, Jose Calderon, G. Leon. That's what he got us with $70 million. Boosting and brassing that we had the most money to spend. We could we could approach a player, be like, what player you want to play with? And they could come to LA together or we could spread it out. He was saying all these things. He's gonna spend his money wisely. But then he spends the money on a guy like Mazga, who's 30 years old, who never had any track record of success. He had a small sample size of success in this league, and you give him a contract like that, and then the first thing that come out your mouth, locker room guys. You ain't saying, oh, I feel comfortable he's going to do this. A locker room guy. Luau Thing, 31 years old, who haven't done anything in, in years. In years. He had his best couple months when Bosch went down. That's still a small sample size as far as redemption or what he did in the past. He gets $72 million, fully guaranteed. And first thing you say, lost locker room, a strong locker room president. 
you get Coderon in the trade for you boosting bats because you got two measly second round picks with a guy who's not good, can't defend a, a paper bag. Then you get a guy who ain't played in the league in years and G who haven't done anything. And the whole thing really, like I said, is financially. They got a guy from Croatia, Zuba, Moscow, Russia, Luau Ding, Sudan, Yi, China, uh, Calderon, Spain, and Marcelo, Brazil. They got all these international guys on their team. It's about the money. They try. They not the Spurs, but they trying to, you know, trying to tap in the international market to get the money, so they don't lose anything. Far as you know, they bring a lot of money with Kobe. But it's sad. It's just really sad. It's sad. Um, what's going on right now? Still got a little cold, but it's sad. And I just need need you guys just to. Be open-minded. I hear a lot of guys, oh, I trust him, Mitch. I don't trust him. He said he had $70 million, had the most cap space. He had the number two pick. He had a lot to sell. And look what he done. Every negotiation went the other team way. We got nothing out to do. That negotiation with Yee benefited him. He know he gonna make up the sixty games. He gonna he gonna play the sixty games. He gonna get the eight million dollars. He gonna get paid heavy. Moscow got a four year guarantee, sixty four million, which no one else was gonna give him. Ding seventy two million, which he he ain't worth that right now. And you get caught on, all you get is second round pick. Why you ain't get a young player in return? They want to wait so bad. Why you ain't get Tony Snell? Say no, I want Tony Snell and and caught on. This way you get a young player, uh, uh, athletic wing. Why didn't you do that? You get two second round picks of guys who, who might not even be on the team because you don't want too many young players. And you package them however you do it, but you could have got Tony Snell. They kind of a little crowded at that, that wing position. I just don't understand what's going on. Every negotiation went the opposite way. Look at a guy like Brandon Jennings, one year, five million dollars. Guy's a legitimate ball player. That's 26 years old. I could just go on and on. Look at a team like Philadelphia. They picked up Gerald Henderson and Gerald Bayless. They didn't overpay them guys. Them guys ain't, really, ain't put no damn in their wallet. And they're in their 20s. They're not over the hill. So it's it's a problem with Lake and Land. I know this uh, video is close to 20 minutes. And like I said, this whole situation is, is tough. And, and I defended Mitch, but now I really see that it's, it's, a, it's a problem. We have really problem, and, and no team going to end. That's why. Then, oh, real quick before I end this video, I'm going to show you guys this. Y'all know it. it. Ain't like I'm not showing you anything. Remember the offseason part of Jimmy Butler? The Celtics had the third pick. We had the second pick. They wanted Jimmy Butler. Right? Chicago was willing to trade Jimmy Butler. Boston offered. Boston offered. Damn, this lights. Boston offered. The third pick, the 16th pick, and uh, I think Jay Crowder. Sh Chicago said no, they wanted um, Avery Bradley. That's basically nothing, even with Avery Bradley. But with the Lakers, they wanted the Lakers to give up the second pick plus one of the three. Clarkson, Randall, or Russell. You see how teams trying to get the Lakers to overplay? Thank God they didn't do that for Jimmy Butler. We would have had to give up two top of the line prospects for Jimmy Butler 
and and everybody said the between the third pick and the sec and the second pick it's a big drop off. And and look what Boston's offering. But they said the Lakers, you got to give up the second pick plus one of the three. And Mitch said no. And that deal was out there. That's no rumor. That deal was out there. Mitch denied that. He he he, he shot that deal down. He did not want to take that deal, which was smart. You don't give no too high end prospect for no Jimmy Butler. You know, so um about to end this video. I just want to uh point that part out real quick. I know I have the 20 minute videos, it's crazy. But um I'll talk to you guys soon.